Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on your time zone. Today, we're going to talk about very exciting topic, machine learning. And we will talk about how to start using machine learning in Power BI. Uh, it's my pleasure to host my friend, my colleague, Leon, Leon Gordon. Uh, he's MEP from Onyx Data. I'm just directly handing over to you, Leon. Excellent. Thank you very much, Halil. Like I say, it's an absolute pleasure to be here uh, with the Istanbul uh, Power BI user group and also a pleasure to welcome you on board to Onyx Data as well, Halil. So some very great news that we had this week. My pleasure. <laughs> now, with that being said, let's go in. Oh, Leon, can you hear us? We lost your voice. Can you still hear me OK? That's fine. You are back. OK. And can you see the screen OK? Exactly. Crystal clear. Uh, OK. It appears to be every time I minimize um, the Teams window, mm -hmm. um, you lose my voice. So I'm back now. So we might have to run through it like this. I'm not too sure why that is. OK. It doesn't look like when I present, it doesn't look like you can hear me. So what we will do um, is run through like this. So hopefully you can just confirm you can still hear me, Halil? Yes, I do. No. OK, so apologies for that. So um, today we're going to we're going to go through an introduction to machine learning in Power BI. Now, as Halil mentioned, uh, my name is Leon Gordon. I'm a current Microsoft Data Platform MVP. Um, and feel free to reach out and connect to me on LinkedIn. Um, you can follow uh, my company, Onyx Data. And I'm also the chair and founder of the Microsoft Power BI UK user group and a data DNA data set visualization group, whereby we have um, a data set readily available to the community every month to take away and visualize in any data visualization tool that they choose um, in a chance to win some prizes like Amazon vouchers as well. So with that being said, uh, let's go into what we will cover in a session. So first and we will take a brief look at what is machine learning, often referred to as ML. Um, how can we benefit from ML or machine learning in Power BI? How to create a machine learning model in Power BI using either premium or premium per user, often referred to as PPU, and how to create a machine learning model in Power BI for free or using Power BI Pro. Then at the end of the session, I'll also give you some resources to continue your learning. Um, now it is really worthwhile in noting that we're going to cover a lot of material within today's session. It is going to be very demo heavy and I am going to skim over a lot of the technical aspects um, under the hood of what we're doing in an effort to stay on time um, and go through the demonstrations. OK, please do feel free to ask questions throughout um, within the chat. As Halil mentioned, we do want this to be an interactive session. OK, so with that being said, um, what is machine learning? So machine learning is a branch of artificial uh, Leon, intelligence. We, we don't see your screen at all. How, how do we continue? Um, really? But the, mm -hmm. the, the, let me share again. OK. Um, can you see my screen now? I don't. Now it is available. OK, so, excellent. Uh, apologies, the demo gods are not being kind to us uh, this evening for some reason. So. Um, first and foremost, is machine learning. So machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence, often referred to as AI, that teaches you what comes naturally to humans and animals. And this is to learn from experience. Machine learning algorithms use computational methods to learn information directly from data without relying on a predetermined equation as a model. So our key takeaways from this is that what we're looking to achieve with machine learning is to make the machine learn from experience and to learn information directly from data. So with that being said, how can we benefit from machine learning within Power BI? 
So th there are many ways that we can do this. We can look at real time predictions, customer churn analysis, customer leads and leads and conversion, and also prediction of fraud. Now, within today's session, we're going to look at a fictional company and look at how we can um, predict customer leads and conversion. So we have a problem. We have a fictional business that is currently spending three million pounds uh, per year on acquiring leads and they only have a conversion rate on converting those leads from buyers their rate is very low at 4.3 percent now as we can imagine this company is spending a large amount of money on buying leads that then go through the sales funnel um, and hopefully end up within a sale and being a buyer of this company's tool so we have two problems here. One is a large amount of lead spent to the organization, which is impacting the bottom line, and also a low conversion rate. So they're also selling less. So wouldn't it be great if we could use machine learning to identify leads which are more likely to be purchasers um, with, uh, within our organization before we actually spend the money on the leads? And also in turn, this will then reflect in a higher conversion rate. So with that being said, let's jump into our first demo. So hopefully uh, you can continue to see my screen throughout. Um, I'll just try and minimize this screen here. Hello, if, if you do lose my audio or screen, then please do let me know. OK. OK, um, so hopefully you can still hear me OK? Yes. Exactly. Fantastic. Um, so what we currently have is we're looking at the GitHub repo. I'll just pop this into the chat as well for anybody that wants to um, follow along with us. The link for this. <coughs> we have to set one being our which we are going to in our model, and the other being our prospective buyer CSV, okay, which is uh, our leads as such. So let's just take a look at the underlying data within the CSV files. So first and foremost, we have a sales training CSV. As I mentioned, this is the information or the data set we're going to use to train our machine learning model. So in here, we have some attributes, including um, a, a purchaser's age, their marital status, their gender, yearly income, total children, the number of those children that are at home, their education, their occupation, their house owner flag, the number of cars owned, the state province code, the, their postal code, and the most important column that we're interested in with our sales uh, training data is whether or not they were a buyer with us or not. So this is a Boolean flag uh, with zero representing false and one representing true. OK, now this is key because we're using historic customer information to train our machine learning model to be able to base a prediction off of. OK. Now, we'll also take a brief look at our leads data, so prospective buyer CSV. So this is the leads as they come into the organization. We can see that this has come from a transactional system because we have the prospective buyer key and, an also, and also an alternate key. We have additional columns being the lead's first name and their last name, and we have common attributes to our sales training data, including age, marital status, gender, yearly income, the total children, the number of those children that are at home, the education, the occupation, their house owner status, the number of cars owned, the city in which they live, the state province code, and also the postal code. Now it's key to note here that we don't have the additional column within our lead information for whether they are a buyer or not, because we haven't actively contacted uh, these individuals as of yet. OK, so hopefully that sets the scene that we have historic customer information of whether an individual was a purchaser, a buyer with us. And also we have new lead information which we haven't spoken to as of yet. So let's just jump into um, the Power BI service to which I have um, a previously prepared workspace called Sandbox. Now, this is a premium per user workspace, um, and it would also look the same in premium um, because the functionality we're going to go through in this first demo is only available in premium per user or premium. So first and foremost, we're going to create a new data flow. OK, um, and sometimes on my system, I have to select this twice. Hopefully for you, it selects first time. So once we go into new data flow, we're going to be guided uh, by the Power BI service wizard to start creating our data flow. 
So to do that, first we want to ingest our sales training data and our lead information into our data flow. So we're going to define a new table and add new tables. Okay. So once we do this, we'll be presented um, with our data source, our choose data source screen. And in our first example, we're going to use the text CSV connector, uh, where it asks us to input our connection settings um, and our file path or URL. Now, what we can do is just go back to our GitHub repo. And first and foremost, let's utilize our sales training CSV. We can get the raw version of this file and just copy and paste that URL directly into our data source settings. We can go ahead and select next. And in the background, uh, Power BI is, is running it as well as passing the underlying data for the first 200 rows, as we can see here, to um, actively define the column data types and also use the first row as headers. So we can see um, in this preview of the file data that all of our data types have been correctly um, attributed and our first row is now column headers. So in this instance, we don't need to transform the data. So we can go ahead and save and close. Now again, in the background, um, Power BI will be passing um, that information and we can just go ahead and save our data flow as ML underscore. Um, let's go with Istanbul for the purposes of today's session. Um, and then we'll be asked uh, by the wizard whether we want to um, refresh our data flow or set a refresh schedule. And for the purposes of this demonstration, we don't want to do that, but you may want to do that in your situation. So now we have our sales training data ingested into our data flow. Let's go ahead and also get our lead data by using add tables in the top right hand side and following exactly the same process by selecting text CSV as our data source. We're gonna go back to our GitHub repo and just grab our prospective buyer CSV. So just remember, this is our lead information. We're gonna go ahead and look at the raw version of that file and just grab the URL and paste that into our connection settings before selecting next. Um, again, Power behind the background will follow the same process in terms of passing that data to give us a preview, um, correctly defining the data types and the first row as being headers. So once again, we can go ahead and select transform data. And again, there are no transformations required from us at this stage. So we can go ahead and save and close. So excellent. With that being said, again, Power BI will ask us if we would like to set a refresh schedule, uh, which we don't want to do um, for the purposes of this demonstration. And we now have both our training data and our prospective buyer data within our data flow. So now we can start to build out our machine learning model by selecting machine learning models in the top left. And we'll be welcomed by a nice um, UI wizard um, that will tell us what we'll be doing in terms of building our machine learning model. So first and foremost, we'll be looking to create and train the model. So to do this, we'll be selecting our training data. We'll be choosing a model type. We would then go ahead and train our model before moving on to section two, where we look to improve it. And we do this by iterating and retraining the model. And then ultimately section three, which is applying this model, um, so applying these predictions to our lead data. So let's go ahead and get started. Excellent. So to get started, first and foremost, we need to select um, one of the tables from within our data flow. So as we mentioned, we've ingested our sales training data to train our model. So let's go ahead and select that as our table. And the outcome column that we're actually interested in is whether or not the individual was a buyer or not. OK, so once we've selected those fields, let's go ahead and select next so that we can choose a model. Now, once again, Power BI uh, within the service will be passing the information that's been um, presented to it, and it's actually selected a model on our behalf and suggested it to us here. So we can see on the left hand side here that it's actually selected the binary prediction model. Now, this uh, binary prediction model can predict whether or not an outcome will be achieved. And examples of how to use this is to determine the likelihood of a sales lead converting or the probability of a customer responding to a marketing campaign. 
campaign. So in this instance, Power BI has correctly suggested uh, the appropriate model for the information that we're presenting to it. If it hadn't, then we can go ahead and select a different model up here by clicking here. And then we're presented with either classification models, so the binary prediction model, which we've already seen, or gener general classification, which allows us to distinguish between three or more outcomes. Now, examples of using general classification are classifying credit card applications into groups of those who have good credit, bad credit, bad, bad credit sorry, or those that require further analysis. Also, we can use regression, a, a regression model, which estimates a, a numeric value, and examples of using this are for trying to estimate house prices in a market based on regional factors. Now, as I mentioned, Power BI correctly suggested the binary prediction model. So let's go ahead and select that. So with that being the case, once we've selected our model, we need to identify which outcome we are interested in. So for our buyer column, we are interested in the individual being a buyer. OK, so the buyer being true when the machine learning model uh, finds a match to the buyer, let's define that as a buyer. And when it doesn't, let's define that as not buyer. OK, so once we've done those definitions, we can go ahead and select next. Now, once again, um, in the background, the Power BI will also be passing that information. And what it's suggesting to us here is other attributes within our data set that either have a low correlation or a high correlation with the individual being a buyer. So here we can see that out of the columns we presented to Power BI, um, and in machine learning, it's worthwhile knowing that columns are uh, referred to as features. Um, Power BI believes that age, yearly income, total children, the house owner flag, and also postal code have a high correlation with defining what a buyer is. And it's also suggesting here the remaining columns have a low correlation with buyer, so it's suggesting we don't select those. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to select those and go against what Power BI is suggesting, just so you can see this in a bit more detail um, as we go through. So let's go ahead and select next. Now we can name and train our model. So once again, for the purposes of this, let's call it ML underscore model underscore. Um, now, generally, when you're setting up uh, models yourself, um, I would always put a description if you're able to. It might not be just be yourself that is working on this model, uh, and it could be business facing users as well that are accessing this model. So always please do give a bit more information on what the model is looking to achieve within the description. Now, we then move on to the next section, which is the training time. Now, the longer we train the model, the more accurate results. Now, this is also very true for me. Uh, the longer I practice or train on anything, the better I get with it. So with this being said, you should always look to train the model for as much time as you have available. OK, you can go from five minutes to 360 minutes. Now, once again, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to bring this right down to five minutes or else we would be sat here waiting for a long time. So. What will happen next? So in the background, Power BI would take 80% of the training data that we provided to it. It will then use that data to run iterations and run predictions against, and it will then use the remaining 20% to um, to go over and test the predictions against it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and save and train our model. And so once we've selected that, our changes will have been saved and we can see here that our data flow is now refreshing and being trained in the background. Um, Halil, just at this moment, I'll pause to see if there's any questions. Uh, not yet. Excellent. So as we as we know, um, that model will go away and train for five minutes. So fortunately for us, I have a model which I've prepared previously that I can pick up from where the model will be once it's finished training. So let's just go back to our screen. So once you finish training um, your, your machine learning model, you will be presented with this screen and we have a few options available to us now. So we can either retrain the model, we can view the training report, 
Or alternatively, we can apply the machine learning model to our chosen data set. Now, what we want to do is take a quick look at the underlying training report that is generated whenever you um, build a machine learning model. Now, the reason to take a look at this report is it gives us some insight into how the machine learning model was actually created and why um, it's achieved the predictions that it has achieved. So let's just jump back to model performance, our first tab here within the report. Um, and again, as this is an introductory session, I'm going to gloss over um, a lot of the terms within here and just call out some key factors to be aware of. So the first of those is let's take a look at our top predictors. Now, you may remember when we started to build um, the machine learning model that Power BI recommended some columns had a low correlation with buyer and we can see that quite clearly here so some of those columns which are within the top predictors were yearly income total children um, number of children at home etc so power bi actually um, correctly suggested these columns should not be included the columns that have a high correlation are the likes of age so let's go ahead and select age here and then we can see a breakdown of the percentage of, of buyers which feature in each of these categories. So the majority of buyers for our fictional organization are over 46 or le and less, or 46 to 59, and their marital status is generally a single, and the total children they have at home is generally one. So we're already getting a nice overview of what a typical buyer looks like for this organization. So let's just close that um, again and move on to our next section here. So this is our um, model performance as such. So in this um, the tabular grid here, we can see here in the top left that those that the model has correctly predicted to be a buyer where there are actual buyers. So positive predictions that are correct is actually 704. And the, the, the incorrect false negatives of those predictions is actually quite a high at 859. Similarly, this model hasn't performed well at accurately um, predicting a buyer that's not a buyer, um, and similarly, any false negatives in this instance. Now, just to be aware of, again, without going into too much detail on the differences between increased recall and precision um, within this session, we can just see that if we move our precision slightly higher, as opposed to the recall, that we start to have an effect on our positives within our model. So a good starting point again, as this is an introductory session, um, we won't go into too much detail, but a good starting point here is 0 0.5 um, in terms of accurately predicting um, our buyers and, and non-buyers as well. So with that being said, let's just go on to our next tab. Again, which is the accuracy of the report. Hopefully what you're seeing here is that Power BI Premium does present back to you a lot of information in terms of how the report has performed. Now, what I will just go through on this screen is the fact that we have three values. Um, our teal um, dotted line is the actual ideal performance of um, or, or accuracy even of our machine learning model. Um, how our model actually performed is our yellow line and what would be a random guess at a prediction uh, is actually our black dotted line. So we can see here that we're, we're sitting in the middle in terms of um, what the ideal would be and what a random guess would be. And finally, as I mentioned, um, the report, if I just scroll to the top, um, does give us some further information on how the model was actually trained uh, within AutoML in Azure Machine Learning, um, telling us the amount of sampled rows um, that were taken to run predictions on, the amount of iterations that were run, so in this instance it was 32, and the amount of training rows that it actually utilised to run those predictions against. And then we have a, a, a bit more information, the quality over the iterations of the model. And then we go into a bit more detail in terms of um, the features or the columns that we, we utilized within the model. Again, something to be aware of as opposed to something to go into too much detail with today. So once you're happy with the performance of your model, you can go ahead and select apply model in the top right hand side here. And then in your instance, what you would do is select your input table. So this is the model that we want to run our predictions against. So it would be our prospective buyer, our lead information that is. So our outcome column 
let's call it outcome for now. So this is the model's prediction being outputted. And then our threshold, we can see that we've already set that previously at 0 0.5. So if you are following along, please go ahead and select save and apply at this moment. Whereas I mentioned before, I've already got a deployed version of this. So I'll just go ahead and cancel. Now, once you have applied that model, you will be presented with this screen. Now, you may remember that we started with two tables, our sales training and our prospective buyer tables. So we now have um, additional tables that have been created by us, uh, sorry, for us when we applied the machine learning model. So we have the training data. So this is that 80% snapshot of our data set that was used to train. We then have the remaining 20% of that data, which is the testing data. And the tables that we're most interested in is this a prospective buyer enriched buyer prediction because this actually has our prediction um, within this table and finally we have our prediction explanations which at this point we're not too interested in from a reporting perspective so with that being um, said we've now successfully ran our machine learning model created our predictions and applied that to our customer lead information so that's great but how can we look at that well let's jump over to power bi desktop we're going to create a new report. And we can start to pull that information in. OK, so um, as always, we'll be presented with the, um, the get started wizard UI. So let's go ahead and get data. I don't have any recovered files that I need for this session. So we can go ahead and cancel that in a moment. Um, OK, so we're going to actually get data from the data flow that we created so let's go ahead and type in data flow and select power bi data flows and go ahead and connect excellent so within the navigator um, we'll be presented with our sandbox workspace and the um, data flow that we're interested in is the one that's been previously deployed as we know that's finished running so with that being said, we can just open that data flow. And again, the table that we're interested in is our prospective buyer, which has now been enriched, enhanced with our buyer prediction information. So let's go ahead and select that. Um, and rather than look at the preview, let's just go ahead and transform data. Um, at this moment, we'll obviously be presented with the familiar screen of Power Query, and we can see that this is our sales lead information. So we have our prospective buyer key, our alternate key, our first name, last name, and the additional columns. But if we scroll to the right hand side, um, we can now see that we actually have some additional columns with the buyer prediction um, prefix as, as the schema. So the one that we're most, most interested in is our outcome. So this is our prediction from our machine learning model on whether or not these individuals will be a buyer with us. And additionally, the prediction score. So this is the scoring of the accuracy of the prediction. And we do get some additional columns at this point, which is the prediction explanation, which, as I'm sure you would guess, is the explanation of, is of why the machine learning model has selected this as a prediction. And also the explanation comes with an index. Now, as I mentioned, we wouldn't be interested in those from a report inspective perspective, and you can go ahead and remove those if you want to. So all we need to do at this moment in time is go ahead and close and apply to load our data. It's a relatively lightweight data set, so hopefully it shouldn't, it should just take a moment to load. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the recovered files. Um, and so we have our lead information now readily available to us to go ahead and select. So let's just make this slightly bigger. And what we're interested in here is the individual's first name, their last name. And we also want to know the prediction from the machine learning model and the score behind that. So let's just put this into a rudimentary table for the purposes of presentation. And let's also have a rudimentary slicer that we can utilize okay so we now have all of our lead information so their first name their last name we have a machine learning prediction on whether they're expected to be a buyer or not and we have a scoring based on the accuracy of that prediction so if i was presenting this back to a business then i could select over here for true 
so indicating leads that we feel will become a buyer. We can also then sort the prediction score. Sorry, pressed it more than once. We can then sort the prediction score descending for those that we feel the machine learning model has presented with the highest possible accuracy of this person being a buyer at the top and obviously go and give this to our salespeople to begin calling. Alternatively, we can now filter this data to those where our machine learning model is predicting that the likelihood is they won't be a buyer for us and we can either decide not to purchase this information or put this further down the calling list. Okay, so with that being said, that concludes our first demo for today. We've now successfully used Power BI Premium or Premium per user to um, run a binary prediction model and understand whether um, our sales leads are likely to convert or not. So let's just jump back to our presentation. OK. And how can we start to use machine learning in Power BI for free? So that's great. Um, not everybody has Power BI Premium or access to premium per user. So let's take a look at how we can start to make the machine learn for free. And there's an obvious disclaimer here that even though the robot doesn't look very happy, uh, no machines were actually harmed in the making of this webinar. OK, so to do this within um, Power BI, we need to look at some alternative tools, OK? So with that being said, we need to look at um, a tool or a distribution called Anaconda. Now, Anaconda is arguably the easiest way to perform Python and our data science and machine learning on a single uh, machine. And we're also going to look at an, an open source um, Python library called PyCarrot, uh, which was created by um, a gentleman called Moez Ali. And it's a machine learning library that's very lightweight and easy to get up and running. Um, within Python. So with that being said, um, what you would need to do on your machine would be first and foremost to install the Microsoft C++ build tools just to ensure that you have all of the C++ libraries readily available on your system. So I'll just go ahead and put this into the chat. Um, and also we would then need to go and install Anaconda. Now you'd want to get the Anaconda individual edition, which is freely available to download. And I'll just again put this into the chat also. Um, and once you have downloaded that, um, you'll be able to pick up from where I'm just about to go to within this demo. OK, so with that being said, once you've installed Anaconda and the C++ build tools, you can go ahead and search on your system for Anaconda and open the Anaconda prompt. Now, once again, very conscious that we're going to go through this at pace, and this is probably the most technical aspect. So we will gloss over a lot of what's happening behind the scenes here. So you'll notice that once we load the Anaconda prompt, we are presented with something called the base environment. Now, this is great. Now, in Anaconda, you're actually able to start to put together your own environment um, that you can use and have segregated environments or containers as such for each of your data science projects. So we're going to use um, the command called activate um, and we're going to activate an environment called data science underscore UG. Now we can go ahead and press enter at this stage and you'll notice that we've now switched to a new environment, which is data science underscore UG. So once we've done that, we can start to use the conda function to install our little um, Python helper, our helper library called pip. Now pip just allows you to install other libraries within Python uh, relatively quickly and with ease. So let's go ahead and install pip. Now what you'll notice is that pip is already installed in this environment, so it will go through um, and resolve this very quickly. Although in your environment, this may take a little bit more time. So once we have pip installed, we can use the pip function to go ahead and install our machine learning library, which is PyCarrot. So go ahead and press enter. Now, once again, this is already um, installed within this system, so it's going to go through and satisfy all of the requirements. This may take a little bit more time on your system. So once you've achieved those um, three commands, you now have a Python environment which has um, PyCarrot installed, ready to start running some machine learning code. Now, what we then need to do is make Power BI aware that we have a Python environment, OK? So within um, open up your Power BI desktop, head over to File, 
you can go to options and settings, select options, and within the global options and settings, we have Python scripting. Go ahead and select Python scripting. In detected Python home directories, you go ahead and select other, and then you can point your Python home directory at your Anaconda environment, and obviously select the one that you named or defined um, as your environment. In this instance, it's data science underscore UG. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and select OK. And Power BI is now aware of your Python environment, and you're able to go ahead and utilize um, that environment. So with that being said, um, I normally go through and demo uh, how to pull this information into Power BI from the beginning. Um, but in an effort to stay on time, Halil, I'm going to go with my previously created um, solution and work backwards, if that's OK. Yeah, that's fine. Excellent. Um, so here, as I mentioned, we have our PyCarrot demo. So what we would do is in, if we were doing this from the beginning head and get data, which I've already done in this instance, so I'm just going to pick it up from the query editor in Power Query. OK. And in this instance, what we would do is we would look at our data source. We would be using a web connector. OK, as opposed to a CSV or text connector in this instance. And just as we did before, we would go to our repo. I'll just pull these back from the raw version so we can just walk through this step again. Um, if we were looking to get our sales training CSV from the GitHub repo, repo, we would go to the sales training CSV, go to the raw version. And once we've selected that and it loads, we would just copy and paste the URL as we did similarly on Power BI in the service back into our web connector to start to load the data in. Now, one key difference to point out is that the Power BI, um, the desktop version of Power Query doesn't recognize the data types and it also doesn't recognize um, that the, the, the first row is headers. So you do have to go through and follow um, and change those values. So to promote the headers and also change the data types. Now, with that being said, once you've done that, you'll be presented um, with, with this screen, uh, which is our ingested data. And we're able to then go ahead and run our Python script. So to do that, we want to go to our transform menu item and go ahead and select run Python script. Now, what this will do is it will present you with this UI, um, where we're, which enables us to run Python scripts directly within Power BI. Now, at this point, if you are following along, we can just go back to our GitHub repo root folder, and we're now interested in our Python files. So the, the, the files that have um, the suffix .py, and they're labeled in order that we're going to use them. So if you go ahead and select the first script, which is imputing the data for machine learning. Go ahead and look at the raw version and you copy and paste this script directly into Power BI. And you can go ahead and select OK. Now, as I've mentioned, I've done this previously, so I'm going to select cancel. Now, at this point, you'll be presented with all of the data frames that are created within that Python script. OK, the one that we're interested in is df underscore imputed. So you go ahead and select table and this will present you with this view of the data. Now, what we've done within that Python script is you'll notice that our, for instance, marital status, which was previously married and single MNS um, or gender MNF, male and female, have now been encoded to, um, to decimal values. So 0, 0.0 um, or 1.0, depending on um, what the representation is, whether it's married or single, or alternatively, male and female. Now, we need to do this to be able to run this category information through our next Python script, which is to build the machine learning model. So to do that, we can then go ahead and again select run Python script. Which will present you with this screen and we can go back to our repo and simply. In our root directory 
go ahead and select train data set for ML. Get the raw version by selecting all and copying. And then we can paste that directly into our Python script. Now, in, in this example, what we're recreating here is exactly what happened in um, Power BI on the desktop where we did auto ML. So in the background where it went off and um, and, and then ran and trained and iterated the machine learning model. We're, re we're now recreating that with this Python script and it will actually export some, a, a file called a pickle file um, for us to be able to use later on as our machine learning model. So go ahead and select OK. Sorry. Um, and once you've done that, again, you'll be presented with every data frame from within um, the, the Python script. And the one that we're interested in here is predictions. So go ahead and select table which will present you back with the final um, version of this data set, which has some additional columns that we're now familiar with. So we have the label column, which is the prediction, and we also have the score. So we've now successfully ran our machine learning model in Power BI Desktop for free, um, but we need to now combine this with our lead information, okay? So to do this, you would go ahead and ingest your lead information in exactly the same way in terms of bringing in um, the data, promoting the headers. And then we can go ahead once we're at this stage and run our Python script. Now, again, similarly to how what we had to do with our training information, we want to go back to the GitHub repo, into the root directory, get our third Python script, Go ahead and get the raw version of that script. Copy and paste this into our run script. And once again, all we're doing here is encoding the underlying data so that it's ready for us to run through our machine learning model. So on your end, press OK. I'll go ahead and press cancel so it doesn't um, recompile on this end. And you'll be presented with again the same three options we're interested in the imputed table so go ahead and select table and it will open up the imputed data and as you can see all that we've done here is encode our values so again we have marital status which would be two different distinct values male and female uh, sorry married and single and they've been encoded to 0, 0.0 and 1.0 similarly for all the other columns for the values so we're now ready to run our final Python script. So go ahead and select run Python script. You'll be presented with this screen, which is if we go back to our root directory, our final script, which is pipe the data set for training. Script number four. OK, go ahead and get the raw version. Copy. And paste into our Python script. Now this is arguably the smallest of the scripts, but the most powerful. What we're doing here is we're using the PyCarrot library um, to load our, our previously saved model, so our predictions, and run our leads through this model to generate our predictions on whether we feel that this individual, these individuals would be buyers or not. So go ahead and select OK. Now, once you do that, it may take some time to load because obviously you're now rerunning your machine learning model. Um, the, the table that we're currently interested in once that has run is the predictions table. So go ahead and select table. You'll be presented with predictions here. And now you will notice that we have our additional columns. So our label and our score. So we have now successfully uh, ran our machine learning binary prediction on our lead information in Power BI for free using Python and PyCarrot. Now, in for the purposes of this demo, um, what I do is duplicate this table because you may notice that our first and last name values are now encoded um, to decimal values. So to present this back to you in, a, in the same manner um, as we did using AutoML, um, I duplicate a table and then connect those on the on their subsequent keys so that we can um, bring this back in within Power BI. So once you're complete on your end, go ahead and select close and apply.
and then what we can do, I've just obviously previously prepared this. I'll just put this away so we don't need that. Um, is we now have our information available to us. Now, as I mentioned, we can use our duplicated prospective buyer table to bring in our correct first name and last name. So this is the non encoded values. This is now joined on the key to our lead information, which now has our label and our score. For our prediction. And let's also just make our rudimentary slicer again. Um, in this instance, it's zero and one as opposed to true or false. So let's go ahead and highlight all of our buyers, which are true values, sort them by their score uh, from highest to lowest. And we now have our list of um, sales leads, which our machine learning model has predicted whether they are likely to be um, a buyer. In this instance, it's a yes, ready to present back to the organization. And alternatively, once again, we can change this to where our machine learning model predicts that this individual is not likely to be a buyer. OK, so with that being said. We now have a vision. We now can do machine learning within Power BI, either with premium um, or premium per user or for free or using Pro. So how can we take it to the next level? Well, we can start to look at um, outlier detection, topic distribution and potentially association rule mining as well. Um, and as I mentioned, I do have some more resources available to you. Um, so my good friend and fellow MVP, uh, Luca Zavarella, wrote a fascinating book called Extending Power BI with Python and R um, that I would really recommend you go out and purchase um, if you haven't read it already. Alternatively, there are websites available like KD Nuggets um, and Towards Data Science um, that have a, ho a whole heap of information on data science and machine learning in particular. Also, as we mentioned, Anaconda is a great place um, to start in terms of building up your environment. And Microsoft also have some um, extremely useful documentation on building out auto ML models as well. So I'll just go ahead and pop those links into the chat. Um, apologies for the formatting. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and ask if there are any questions off the back of that session. Um, as I mentioned, I know that we've covered a lot in a short space of time. Um, so. There's a slight cutoff in your voice, uh, Leon, but I have to say I'm really impressed. Thank you very much. Let me just stop sharing. Hopefully my voice and, and video and everything comes back to normal now. <laughs> Much better. One one of the best machine learning demonstration I have ever seen. And in terms of Power BI, using Power BI to create uh, machine learning models, it's more than introduction. Thank you for that. Okay, now Thanks, the questions. Thank Thanks a lot, Stephanie. Let's have your questions. Please do not hesitate to ask your questions. Feel free. Yeah, no problem at all. Like I said, we we did cover quite a lot. Um, we do we do try and squeeze quite a lot into that session. Um, so I'm, I'm aware it's probably a lot to take in. Um, as I mentioned, I think that some of um, some of the resources that we've made available in the chat uh, will be very helpful in terms of trying to cement this knowledge and practice yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a question from from myself. Uh, what about the R Python visuals on 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 uh, Power BI visuals app source? Yes. So in terms of it's a slightly separate subject, but yes, you can go ahead and start to use Python to visualize your data uh, within Power BI as well, only using a couple of lines of code, and similarly with R as well. Um, the only caveats to this really, Halil, is that obviously if you're using this on customer. Um, information or data and then it's another layer of code on top um, as opposed to um, um, using standard visualizations okay a question regarding why you chose anaconda or vanilla or other uh, python uh, distributions for me it's personally of choice i like um, the fact that anaconda um, implements a suite of tools and you can use it to implement a suite of tools. So outside of this, one of my favorite Python IDs isn't VS Code, it's Spider. Um, 
similarly you can have Jupyter notebooks as well um, but for me I'd just like the ease of being able to create new environments quite quickly as we saw it is three lines of code um, and we have a readily available uh, sorry three words of code not three lines of code and we have a readily available um, we have a readily available Python environment for us hopefully that answers the question Okay, please, if you have questions, either write it in the chat window or just unmute yourself. Ah, data scientists, I I'm unable to understand the question correctly. Why do we always have to use the same ensemble model on Power BI service? While our intuition says a random forest model would produce better predictions. Yes, so with that being said, um, I don't know for the service is probably my best answer. Um, so what we're saying here is that the service will only give you access to a binary prediction model as opposed to a random forest. Now this may change in the future. Um, if Microsoft is planning that, uh, we're not privy to it, but obviously by using PyCarrot uh, within Power BI Desktop, which obviously you can use on premium environments or with PPU anyway, it still gives you that extra a, a bit of um, flexibility in terms of choosing um, your model. Okay. Actually, Microsoft is doing a lot of things in a very short period of time, so you, you, you need to follow uh, what he's doing every month. Every month, everything is changing <laughs> constantly. Exactly. OK, it was really hell of a session, Leon. Really. No problem at all, Halil. I think there's one, this, this, one this additional. This a compliment. So sorry, <laughs> did I miss any question? I think there's an additional question from Bernat. Ah, uh, yes. Like. Question, Dan, you can run this model on the Power BI service. So the, the short answer is yes. Um, so the, the longer answer is probably for a more advanced session. So you are able to run um, Python uh, libraries within the service and I believe I can hopefully quite quickly give you a link to all of the Python libraries that you can actually run. It's quite a sub list of libraries that can be run within the service. Um, so yes, the short answer to that is yes, you can um, run it. Obviously, it depends on where your data, where your data is sourced from, because then you have to think of the additional elements of potentially gateways if you're looking at CSVs. Um, Within, within local environments, etc., as well. Yeah, great question, and hopefully that answers that. Thank you very much. Okay, any question from the audience? I've just put into the chat now as well um, a list of all of the uh, Python packages which are supported. Yeah, that's great. Okay, as I said, thanks, Aslanum. Uh, are you going to share your files uh, and the other scripts with me? I'll, I'll add them to, to the recording link later on. Yeah, definitely, Halil. I know, I know they're in the chat currently. Um, what I will do is I'll send over my deck as well, um, and also the link to the GitHub repo, which has all of the scripts uh, within it as well. Splendid, great. Okay, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, this session was one of my, one of our group's best, <laughs> really. It was a hell of a session, great introduction. Thanks a lot, Leon. Oh, thank you very much for having me, Halil. Absolute pleasure to be here with you and the rest of the, the user group. Thank Likewise. you very much. Likewise. Thanks a lot. See you, everyone. I'm stopping the recording. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>